G'day ladies and gents and welcome to War Thunder with Mags and welcome aboard the F9 F5 Panther. The Panther is a rank 5 battle rating 9 aircraft of the US Navy and is the last aircraft in the US Naval line. It's armed with 420mm AN M3 cannons with 760 rounds of ammunition. Maximum listed speed on the stat card is 972km an hour at sea level with a maximum altitude of 41,000 feet. Term time's listed at 27 seconds with a climb rate of 4,803 feet per minute. Now that's information you'll find on the stack card, but I'm going to give you an additional piece of information in today's lead-in. The loaded combat weight of an F9-F5 Panther is 6,400 kilograms approximately, with a wing loading of approximately 350 kilograms per meter squared. Or at least that's for the real life F9-F5 Panther. We'll come back to this information a little bit later on. So the Panther, it's outrightly one of the best looking jets in War Thunder. It's absolutely gorgeous. Which is why I'm doing the intro a little bit different today, a little bit of a cinematic feel on it. Because this plane is just stunning to look at. It's a shame that people don't fly it more often, although I can understand exactly why. It's because it's not very good. The F9F Panther was manufactured by Grumman, the same manufacturer that developed the F6F Hellcat and the F7F Tiger Cat, and was their first jet fighter that they developed. It was also one of the first successful carrier-based jet fighters for the US Navy. There had been jets beforehand, but none of them were very good, very reliable, or really suited the role as a carrier-based aircraft. It was used exclusively by the US Navy and the United States Marine Corps in the Korean War, and was used in a combination of jet fighter and ground attack roles. Flying over 78,000 sorties and scoring the first air-to-air -air kill by the US Navy in the war, it was successful at what it did, although it was most certainly not as successful as the F-86 Sabre. While in comparison to the F-86 Sabre and the MiG-15 Biz, the F-9F's top speed was not great at sub-1000 kilometers an hour, at least not for a jet fighter at the time. It was noted as having extremely favorable high-speed maneuvering capabilities. This maneuvering capability was attributed to the Panther's straight wing design. However, the straight wing design was not actually in place for increased maneuverability. The straight wing design was actually to do with its role as a carrier-based jet. At the time of the F9F5's development, jet engines were still in their infancy, putting out nowhere near as much power as they would in later years. After much testing, Grumman found that the engines that were available to them at the time simply weren't powerful enough to get a swept wing aircraft that produces significantly less lift at lower speeds into the air in the distance it was available on an aircraft carrier's deck, even with the assistance of a catapult system. It is worth noting why this problem did exist in the late 40s when the F9F was developed. The rapid advancement of jet technology had led to the problem being solved by the early 1950s, around the start of the Korean War which led of course to the development and eventually the acceptance of the F9 F6 Cougar, an aircraft that has been much requested by the War Thunder community. So that's enough of the history lesson for the moment, what is going on in the battle? Well at this point we're on Spain, we've taken off from the North Runway as the Allies do, and we've headed out towards the bombing sites. I've cut into the clouds and then turned back and I'm manoeuvring in to get a high dive on a number of MiG-15s that are floating around in the area. This is a necessity, as why the Panther's maneuvering capabilities at high speed is okay, it's not a match for either the MiG-15 Biz or the F-86 Sabre. And, well, as I'll come to in a moment, it shouldn't be. Now we get a good strike there, we take the elevator off that MiG-15. Interestingly, it's not going to crash, it's going to continue flying for a few moments, and somebody else is going to have to put it down as it attempts to limp home to base. Now I've also picked up a tail here in the form of an ME163. The ME163 is a plane that really annoys me in War Thunder. It is far more maneuverable than it has any right to be. In real life, the kind of maneuvers you see 163 pilots perform in War Thunder, if they tried to achieve that in real life, the stress would actually split open the aircraft's own fuel tanks, or the rocket's own fuel tanks rather, and the chemical compounds that make up its fuel would combine and turn the 163 into a massive fuel air bomb. Now I do make an attempt to shoot it down here, Usually the easiest way to deal with them is to try and go head on, you will always have better guns. This guy is smart enough to get out of the way on that one, so I miss the shot, and I make no attempt to follow. This is actually the easiest way to deal with 163 pilots that I found, simply fly away from them. They only have around 6 minutes worth of fuel. On a map the size of Spain, he's probably already past the bingo fuel point. He won't have enough fuel to make it back to base, so he will fly until he runs out and crashes, and there is pretty much nothing he can do about it. Providing you do not slow down, 
you always keep your aircraft at maximum speed, they can't catch you. And there's the assist from the MiG-15 I got earlier on. Now as we approach this second MiG-15, I said a moment ago that the F9F shouldn't be as manoeuvrable as the MiG-15 or the F-86 Sabre, and this is actually correct. The quote that I gave earlier on about the F9F having favourable high-speed manoeuvring capabilities is often misquoted. The pilots that said that at the time were not comparing against the MiG-15, which many of them hadn't encountered at that point, or against the F-86 Sabre, which many of them hadn't flown at that point, or most of them hadn't flown. Most F-9F Panther pilots either came from jet training in an aircraft like the P-80, which was known to lock up its control surfaces rather severely at incredibly high near its maximum speeds, or they came directly from propeller-driven aircraft such as the F-7F. And these aircraft were also known at their maximum speed to suffer control stiffening. The clue to the F-9F's maneuverability and where it fits in the hierarchy of maximum tier War Thunder aircraft actually comes in on that wing loading. Now I mentioned that at the start of this video. The wing loading on the F9F Panther is around 350 kilograms per square meter. Now if you do a comparison on that number to the F86F Sabre, the wing loading on the F86 Sabre is only 236.7 kilograms per square meter. Or on the other side, the wing loading of the MiG-15 Biz is only 240 kilograms per square meter. Now the rule of thumb here is lower wing loading equals higher maneuverability. As you can see, the Panther is almost 100 kilograms per square meter higher than either the Sabre or the MiG. So lower maneuverability is to be expected. And once again, I lose control in the bank here. Thankfully, it's not too much of an issue. I'm on the tail of the MiG, not the other way around. However, the MiG is going to reverse his turn and come back through and offer me the one opportunity I'm going to have to take him out. Now, I'm sure by now you've noticed my engine temperatures climbing into the red category. This is entirely normal for the F9F. It can't run sustained 100% power at all times, but if you pull it back to 90, it cools down almost instantly. And I very luckily get a shot through there and take the elevator straight off the back of his aircraft, but once again, we have the case of a MiG-15 that continues to fly without them. Thankfully, the damage does seem to have taken the fight out of him, so all I've got to do is bring this Panther back around, and we've got to chase him back to his base, which is where he's clearly running to. So, back to maneuverability. The numbers don't lie. The wing loading on the F9F is vastly higher than that in the Sabre or the MiG, so it should not be as maneuverable. However, that straight wing does have an effect. At speeds sub 500 kilometers an hour, the straight wing will give an edge to the Panther. Not enough to beat the Sabre or the MiG in maneuverability. Wing loading still comes into play, but enough that the Panther is able to at least match the turning capabilities of these two aircraft, or get close enough to it to be effective. The problem with War Thunder, of course, is that speed is king. The faster you go, the better you are. So, sub 500 km an hour maneuvering battles in jets, especially Battle Ready 9 jets, almost never happens. And not to be the bearer of bad news to those of you hoping for the F9F Cougar to change this up, the F9F Cougar's wing loading is 300 kg, so why it is 50 kg less than the F9F 5, which should definitely increase its turning performance, it's still around about 50 to 60 kilograms higher than that of either the F-86 Sabre or the MiG, so the Cougar will still be a less maneuverable aircraft. And the MiG finally goes down. Why the damage was not enough to stop it from flying, apparently it was enough to stop it from landing, so that is my first and only kill of this match. I do turn the aircraft back towards the bombing sites, as I did spot an IL-28 over there earlier on in the battle. However, he got taken out by something. I'm not entirely sure if it was AAA, another aircraft, or he crashed, but that MiG was the last aircraft in the match. So, results for the match. First place for the team with one kill and one assist, 576 points total. Awards were Final Blow, Terror of the Sky, Bulletproof, and On Hand. 44,536 Silver Lions and 2,848 research points on a premium account, no boosters. Important things to notice on this last page, one aircraft destroyed, one assist, as you saw before, two critical hits, but I only hit the aircraft four times. You'll also notice that I'm still researching the gun upgrade at this point. So, why the guns do shotgun the individual shells, I have often heard complaints that they are not particularly effective. As you can see, they are very much so. It's just a matter of getting those shells on target. It's also worth noting that this aircraft does have all the performance upgrades, it's only the guns and the ordnance pylons that are needing to be unlocked.
Now this battle did require a lot of distance in order to set up a position to even be able to engage effectively in the F9F, and this is actually one of the reasons and a really good showcase for why I actually don't like the way War Thunder does the activity meter. As you can see my activity was only 57%, which is abysmal, but it was a requirement in order to make this aircraft work. So the F9F5 Panther. There's a lot of misconceptions about how this aircraft should actually handle, and why I still stand by no aircraft in War Thunder is performing as it should. In comparison in performance to the Sabre and the MiG, it's probably not actually far off from where it should be. The greatest problem with the F9F isn't actually its lack of maneuverability, it's its lack of speed. At high tier battles, you are fighting constantly against aircraft that are much faster than you are. You could get away with the lack of maneuverability that the aircraft is well, not meant to have, as I demonstrated by the numbers, if the plane was fast enough to be able to catch things, but the reality is it's not. Its speed is very much equivalent to the aircraft that you'll find in the British tree, however they get away by having aircraft that have incredibly low wing loading and extremely high maneuverability. The Panther lacks both and that's why it suffers in the War Thunder combat environment. To give you one final comparison there, the Meteor F8 has a wing loading of only 218 kilograms per square meter, making it better than both the F86 Sabre and the MiG-15 Biz. Now what this all leads up to is, well, it's why I don't believe that either of the F9 F2 or the F9 F5 should be battle rating 9 aircraft. They should be battle rating 8. I know that won't change a huge amount, in the way they are match made currently, but it doesn't make sense to have them top tier. That position really does need to be filled by the F9 F6 Cougar. Now while the Cougar's wing loading is still higher than the MiG-15 and the F86 Sabre and its maneuverability overall will be lesser than the two, it is very comparable in the speed department with a maximum level flight speed of around about 1050 kilometers an hour, putting it around about 50 kilometers an hour less than the level flight speed of the F86 F Sabre. And that speed I think will make the difference. Anyways, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more and haven't already, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.